I'm Britt Hammer, and welcome to this week's free image review at BPSOP. I teach Celebrate Your Life in Beautiful Images and Amazing Travel Photos Made Easy. So let's get started. This image is called Paris Street by Hohopia. I hope I got your name right. It's a handheld Panasonic Lumix DMC LF1 with a Leica lens of 11.3 mil. Uh, at f5.6 and 125 a second, and ISO 400. Um, so the premise behind the image is uh, standing outside your B&B. Uh, you wanted to capture a typical street scene soon after a rain shower when a bicyclist appeared out of nowhere, and that's when you managed to catch this wonderful, wonderful shot. So really nicely done. Uh, I really appreciate that we can see that the pavement is still wet and we do get a sense of the buildings and where we are. Um, and the thing that's kind of interesting is you see a lot of the blue sky with the clouds uh, and yet the pavement is wet. So that's a really interesting way of playing around with your image. Um, really nice capture because capturing um, spontaneous scenes like this it's not easy. So nicely done. I did want to show you um, another idea to see if this is something that speaks to you. On the right is a different crop uh, that I just wanted to show you to see um, if you like it at all. And so what I'm interested in personally is um, I'm always looking at taking away anything that distracts me from my subject. So in the case, um, your original image is on the left and the cyclist is who you want the attention to go to but this le and then whatever this is I don't know if it's a jardin or what uh, this says here on the text this just competes for my attention um, because this text is so large um, now there's a couple different ways you can look at it one is um, imagine that uh, you had another shot and you could actually get that in and show some of it but it would completely change the story and so this is why your shot's so nice and that it's a vertical and it really, you get the sky and the, the, the ground as well. But on the right, is it just a different crop? It's, I show it to you as an idea to see if you like it or not. And it, if you don't, that's perfectly okay. But what I did was I cropped just outside the le. And let me just show you, it's just, I'm going to go right up to the L and show you how that changes a little bit. I get a little bit of a distraction here. This is just fine-tuning, right? Um, so if I just go inside this lantern here, we end up there. And so the question I have for you is, does it draw your eye more to the cyclist once you take this le and then the ja out? Or um, does it change the story to something that you're not happy with? Or do you like it more? Either way, you did a beautiful job uh, all around. Again, it is not easy to get these handheld shots that are so nice and sharp and that are showing in action and um, also that show a sense of place and that's something that we look at in Amazing Travel Photos Made Easy. Um, I would be curious to see what other images you manage to catch um, during your trip. Really nicely done. Next we move to an image called What's Up by Stino Scaletta. Uh, it's a Canon 5D Mark III using a 24 to 105 millimeter lens set at 40 mil, uh, ISO 100 F10, and uh, the camera was set at shutter priority, which was very smartly done. And this is taken in Huatuco, Mexico. Hope I pronounced that correctly. And uh, you say, I noticed that a lot of people use motorcycles and thought what a great opportunity to practice my panning techniques right on with that. You did a fantastic job. Um, and then uh, Stino continues to say, I took many shots and this picture is the one of the few that turned out. So, um, fantastic image. I love it. Uh, there isn't anything I would change. Um, what I would like to do is show you some other ideas to play around with story. Um, a lot of times as photographers what we look to do is we look to take this one amazing shot and so I wanted to show you some other stories that are within this shot and all it takes is a matter of changing aspect ratio or the crop and um, let's take a look. 
The top image is your original image, and the lower image is a tighter crop, and it changes the story. So this is the area that I took it from. So let's say, just imagine now, that you could have zoomed in a little bit more, hypothetically speaking, and one of the things what, that I do when I am doing action shots is I decide, do I want them to be just riding into my frame? So this is like they've got still plenty of negative space on the left side. Or do we want them to be uh, riding through the frame? Or do we want them to be riding through the frame, like in this shot, where there's very little negative space at the left in front of them, and all the negative space is in the right? And so in this case, you'll notice that the, uh, you'll see the cars, whereas in the previous version, the cars are then out of the shot, and it becomes a lot more abstract. And in this version, so the top left is your original, uh, and the top right, this crop is showing, basically putting the wheels on the lower edge of the frame. So let me show you where I've taken that. So imagine that you could zoom in this far. And then this lower one, he's literally about to ride out of the frame. And so it changes the story considerably. So here you have four versions. Each of them tells a completely different story. The top left is your original one. It shows everything. They are smack, more or less. Actually, I think it's kind of the, the center is the, this guy's back. In the top right one, they are just riding into the frame. So they have like all this room ahead of them. Notice how the background, because of this white business at the top has now cropped out, it becomes a lot more abstracted. You don't really see cars as much. In the lower left one, you still get a sense of the cars here, but they're about to drive out of the frame. And obviously, there's another version where you could have the wheels just touching the lower end of the frame as well. And then on the bottom right, they're literally riding out of the frame. So it completely changes the story. Regardless, beautifully done. Um, and so I encourage you and welcome you to join my class. Um, I teach Celebrate Your Life in Beautiful Images, as well as Amazing Travel Photos Made Easy. And we look at, really, story. We don't focus in my classes on the technical as much as we do on story and how these little things like this completely change the story of your image. Nicely done, though. This image called Tranquility is by Chad Slater. It's using a Nikon D90 uh, with a Nikon lens that's uh, 18 to 200 mil. Um, it's set at 55 millimeters. He's using a tripod, an IR remote, and the, uh, it's set at F32, half second, ISO 100, and using a circular polarizer filter. So the story behind this image, uh, he writes, I wanted to portray the calmness that water has on people. And this is shot in the Poconos of Pennsylvania on a cool, crisp November day with bright sunshine. And his goal was to create motion in the water and to capture his daughter relaxing by the creek. So excellent. Absolutely gorgeous image. Um, I wouldn't change anything. I think it's really beautiful how you've got her in the corner. And also the water really does uh, look like it's flowing. So what I would like to do is show you some other options for story. Because um, this definitely works. So let's just take a look at some other variations to see if you like them. And I show them just because these are the types of things, um, this the concept of story is something that we focus on in the classes that I teach. All right, so in this we have on the top left is your original image. The variation on the right is a different aspect ratio and what I did, and I'm just showing this to you to see if you like it, if it feels different to you, because really what happens is um, how tightly you crop and what aspect ratio you use, it really does change the story. So a question I had is, what would it look like if there were a little less grass? And so this one, I grabbed this portion of your image. And I could actually go all the way to here, and let's try that. So this is a, nine by, a 16 by 9. On the lower left, it is a little bit tighter. And let me just move that away. So you can see where I'm grabbing. And basically, let me just go all the way 
to the back of her hair and push her hair out. So what happens in this lower right one, I'm pushing the back of her uh, body and a little bit of her hair out of the side of the frame. So do you see how in your original one you've got some negative space? That gives definitely an open feeling. Uh, this one in the top right, which is a different aspect ratio, has that again. The one on the below uh, left, the rock is gone, this top left rock, and it feels maybe a little bit more intimate, which is probably not what you wanted because you wanted to create a, a relaxed feeling. So I wanted to show this to you to show you how well you did by doing the, the frame that you did. And then the lower right one was really just to show a completely different context, what happens if you do it as a square. It completely changes the story, and you may or may not like it. Uh, might abstract it a little bit more uh, with the water, but um, it's just an idea for you. Uh, regardless of if you like any of these other ideas, your shot's beautiful. Um, that is definitely one to print out and frame, so nicely done. This image is called Alone by David Frank, and I don't have any um, technical details, but that's totally okay. I don't know where this was taken, but it's absolutely glorious um, how you have this man playing uh, his instrument. You've got this beautiful wall and how these darker walls just kind of lead the eye down into his face, uh, which looks a little sad, I have to say. Um, and then the dark door and just all these lines just leading to him and also his open case and then more lines here. So what's really interesting to me is you're really playing beautifully with these graphic elements with these lines and shapes and colors and then you've set this man in the center. So excellent. Well done. Um, I wanted to show you some other ideas to see if you like them. They will change the story a little bit but I offer them to you to see if you like them. Alrighty, so on the top left is your original image. This one in the middle, I was curious to know what would happen if you were to, for example, get a little tighter in your framing. So I've just basically, I'm cheating by cropping. This is your original aspect ratio. And what I've done is I've pushed the case out of the corner of the frame. Now granted, this does um, change the balance and uh, he does become, his face does become more in the center of the frame. You may or may not like that. And also the dark element of the door uh, is minimized and maybe doesn't compete with the dark uh, element of his clothing as much. So this might draw your eye a little bit more to the, uh, to the man. So another option for you, because this is how beautiful your image is, you've got other images within it. Uh, one is this lower section, just not even showing his face, but just showing his feet and kind of emphasizing the, uh, the case where the money can be put in and just hinting at the instrument that he's playing. This lower left idea is um, just really pushing him into a box, literally. Changes the story. It's not the story that you were telling. But um, he's not so isolated as he is in your image, but he's definitely kind of um, crowded in the space. And so I offer that to you as just another idea because his hat is pushed out of the top of the frame. His, um, I've gone through the edge of his pants and his feet to push them out of frame and also the case. And so that draws the eye a lot more to uh, this area here. And then, of course, the last option is to not even show the case, uh, to just show this man playing. So those are some other options for you. But beautifully done, wonderful colors, and um, I hope to see you in my class because I think I could have a lot of fun showing you some other things and that I think you might like. But regardless, beautifully done. This image is called Death by Chocolate by Pauline McAleese. It is tabletop macro photography using a set of CSI Little People models. The scale is 1 to 72. Uh, it's using natural light plus a natural light bulb and a tabletop lamp. Fuji X1, X-T1, a 60mm macro lens, ISO 200, F18, 2.5 seconds. And of course using a tripod and remote release. Glorious. This is, I just, I got so happy watching this or just looking at this. This is brilliant. 
love what you did. I um, love how you're playing with the dairy milk. And it's like this droplet is going to fall on this guy. Um, it looks like there's one guy here that's, I can't quite see his head, so I don't know what happened to him if he got like knocked down by a chocolate uh, nub. Um, and this guy, you kind of wonder what he's going to do. Um, and one thing that's kind of funny is um, I have this strange association because my husband works with an astronaut, and these just reminded me of astronauts on the moon. Kind of crazy. Um, this guy, I'm wondering what he's pointing his camera at. Is he, you know, I almost kind of wish he were standing over and like photographing this guy or um, what's in this, this box. Because then you've got a, a fourth guy who's looking into this box. Um, so I kind of almost wish this guy were, you know, I don't know what he's photographing. It would be kind of fun if he were photographing the box. But regardless, absolutely fantastic. I did want to show you one idea just to see if you like it. Okay, maybe two ideas. Um, this first one, what I did was I just tightened up a little bit. And I was curious to see what happens if there's no negative space here so that it's this kind of continuous thing that leads into your frame. What also happens is there's a wee bit little less um, negative space in front of the dairy milk. And we've kept the, uh, the little bit of negative space above the eye just to show that it's an eye. And it ends up taking a little bit more of the foreground out. So the question I have for you is do you like a little bit less, you know, a little tighter, better? That's an option. And this one, um, what I did was I went a little bit tighter still. So this one uh, is not in your original aspect ratio, but what I did was I cropped right up to this, um, I'm not sure if it's a crate or what it is, but I just changed that. And also um, basically making the D, so let me just show you the crop, basically it goes right up to the D, so there's no negative space in front of it, and it makes it a bit tighter. And the question is, does that tighten your story a little bit, or um, does it not? So those are just some things that uh, I offer you. Regardless whether you like these other ideas or not is perfectly uh, fine, because your image is fantastic. I really enjoyed it. So there you have it. It's not your traditional image review. But this is how I work with students in my class. We look heavily at composition and story. So I hope to see you in class. Bye.